everybody thinks SEMA is a car show. It's not. You're listening to the Get Out and Drive podcast with John Custom Car Nerd Meyer and Jason Old Car Guy Car. Are you ready to get out and drive? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another backseat episode of the Get Out and Drive podcast. My name is Jason Old Car Guy Car. And I am John Custom Car Nerd Meyer. John, this was my first time to SEMA. Yes, my feet are still hurting. Yes, my feet are still hurting. I haven't been able to walk since I got back. (laughs) So guys, if you're listening to this podcast right now, uh, you've probably been listening to us for a while. If this is your first time, um, I'm sorry. But we just spent a week in Las Vegas and the three days of SEMA, I bet you we've got 15 miles easy. My phone said like, like 35,000 steps or something. Oh, it was absolutely crazy. So what we want to do with this kind of pod, with this podcast, this backseat episode is just kind of give you our experience on what we liked, what we didn't like um, about the whole SEMA experience in Las Vegas. And I want to start off by saying, you know, we spent eight total days there and, you know, the first four days that we were there, we, we had fun. We went and we visited uh, some, we did some sightseeing, you know, mm-hmm. Hoover Dam, uh, the Bonnie and Clyde car. Uh, we just, we had a blast even long before SEMA ever started. We and went I to Shelby, day, we went to Shelby America. Shelby America. Yes. You know, we had, uh, we got to see where they build all the Shelby Mustangs and the, uh, and the Ford F-150 Shelbys. Like we just, what an opportunity. And we met some really really fantastic people there. Um, not just at Shelby American. Uh, we did the cars and coffee the next day. Uh, mm-hmm. we headed over to uh, gateway, uh, and we, we said, saw some, uh, some vehicles over there at what, what's it called? Gateway, 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 classic cars, gateway, classic uh, cars. started in St. Louis, but now it is, uh, all over the place, all over the country. Yeah. And, uh, like got to interview some really, uh, some really great folks and, and show off their cars. And if, uh, if you follow us on YouTube, there's some videos over there that you guys can head over and and check out some of those fantastic that 57 Chevy convertible. You keep talking about that car. It was fantastic. Oh, that was a that was probably one of my favorite, even before we even got to SEMA. So you've got you've got like this tiny little person inside of you that's a low rider screaming to get out. A little bit. I see I never, that. I never, I never thought that I would be because I look at some of these the 62 Impalas, the mm-hmm. big, you know, the big Pontiacs, the Buicks and the Cadillacs, all, you know, 14 inch wheels and tires and right. they're on hydraulics or they're on airbags or whatever they're doing. And like that never really appealed to me until I could see it and touch and feel and look and smell like though. Like I think I'm a convert. I, I saw you directly just run right towards that tan 57 Chevy convertible that was at uh, Shelby American Cars and Coffee. I did. In fact, the first thing I did was I whipped out my phone mm-hmm. and my microphone and my little tripod thing, and I started filming. Like, right. I don't know what it was. So, I'm, I'm uh, generally speaking, I'm not a big shoebox or or a tri five guy. I like. I'm just. I appreciate them for sure. But when I saw this one, I'm like, man, John, get over here and look at this car. And so we got to introduce, we got to interview the owner and uh, what a great guy told us all about the car. And, uh, you know, I fell in love, not just with the 57 Chevy, uh, but with the low rider aspect of Mm -hmm. that particular car. And then we got, get ourselves to see him. And I saw another one there and I'm like, why, why is this being presented to me? Why am I seeing so many of these things? And anyways, um, so yeah, I, I had a really great first experience in Las Vegas, uh, before we got to SEMA and then on Tuesday morning, it all started off John Mm -hmm. with a great big breakfast, (laughs) a great big award show. Yeah. And an awesome, absolutely awesome. Ken block video of him racing that electric Audi like 
come oh, on. Oh, that was the insanity. I mean, to to even listen to him talk about uh, the horsepower, the amount of torque, the fact that that car does not have a transmission. I mean, it doesn't have gearbox um that that type of thing it's it's absolutely amazing to hear the car whine uh and the absolute incredible amount of power that that car has um they showed where he was running around in circles in front of uh caesar's palace or whatever and and i think they said wheel speed was 120 something miles an hour and he said normally when he's doing some tight donut like that it's like 60 miles an hour that's that's crazy yeah, and, and the fact that he had to learn how to drive almost all over again because of the right. difference between a non-shifting mm -hmm. engine setup and one that you would have to shift like a normal, you know, or an internal combustion engine. So learning right, how to, with a normal gearbox, right? Yeah, learning how to throttle uh, mm. down and up was how you controlled your gears, so to speak, in an electric car, right. and. Uh, Burning through what? What did he say? A hundred, over a hundred. Well, there was like a hundred sets of tires. The film or that crazy. nine minute or seven minute video, whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, it was That's it crazy. was insane. Um, because I know the uh, folks from Hoonigan were there, and he was he was talking about the video, and and he normally said they go through I don't know twenty or fifty sets of tires or something, but they went through over a hundred or whatever he said. It was it yeah. was crazy. And then you know so. You get to SEMA, so you got to get there first. Right. You got to get to SEMA. You got to be able to walk in the door. And we struggled with a little bit of, what do you say, directional challenges. Um, oh, that's true. I can go ahead and say if I ask somebody, five people the same question, I got six different answers. Yeah. So um, the one fella that kind of got us back on track was a parking attendant in the back lot somewhere down on Judge Joe Brown Boulevard or whatever it was called down there. Right, right. <laughs> and he directed us to make a right, make a left, go down, take a left past the 7-Eleven. 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 And <laughs> put us where we had to be, which coincidentally was the first stop of the morning. All we were trying to do was we were trying to get our media badges Right. Uh, which gives gives us access to going inside the doors at SEMA. Right. So we literally spent two hours uh, that morning trying but you can't to find. Go, you can't go and park in front of the building no. where you need to get your badges. Because they're setting up the show. Yeah, they're setting a show up. And you have to understand that if you go there and if you are a first timer at SEMA, you have to understand uh, that you have to park in like another state and and walk there or or pay sixty dollars to park at the chinese food restaurant across the street yeah uh or shuck and jive or do something crazy and and that's kind of what we did we had to shuck and jive and uh bribe people to get in the uh, lot to, to to let us pick up our badges so because we couldn't park in that front lot in front of central no south hall i guess it south was, hall right um we we come up with this plan and john says <laughs> well Jason, how about you and Junior go in and get your badges? And I'll just drive circles around the lot out here. Right. And then when you guys get your badges, Joanne and I will go in and do the same thing. So sure enough, we go in, we go exactly where we need to do, where, where we need to go, get our badges. We come down. And I said to John, you know, I texted him, we're ready. He comes over, he hops out, him and Joanne go inside. And Junior and I get in the Jeep and we just go down and we circle around the parking lot a little bit. And the old fella on the John Deere, <laughs> right by us and, and i said i said to junior i said whatever you do don't make eye contact with that old fella over there right he asked us He's to the move one him. we snuck by to get in we snuck by him because he was the same guy that told us we couldn't get into that lot the first time right um so anyways we we got our media badges and we were you know happy as pigs and poo and then uh seema day we woke up at five o'clock in the morning to right. get ready and get on the road because we knew we had to do a couple of things. So one was we had to a get there. That's about a 20 minute drive from where we were through traffic. You we have to, to avoid them. all the limousines making a left turn from the right lane <laughs> across four lanes of traffic, across four lanes of traffic and then making a U-turn. And we had to find 
a place to park. So finding a place to park, if you're familiar with SEMA or, or the convention center at all, this, the convention center owns specific parking lots. And apparently, according to John last year, the Platinum parking lot right. was where you parked. That's right by the loop. Walk yep, across the street, loop. go to loop. And the Fantastic. loop is, if you guys don't know what it is, go look it up. It's, <clears> it's the Tesla loop. It, it's an underground tunnel system using Teslas uh, to taxi you back and forth between the different halls of mm -hmm. the convention center. So we said, okay, we'll go to the platinum lot. We get over there. They won't let you in the front door or in the front gate. So he says, that person said, oh, you got to go around back. Okay. So we go around back. And that guy says, well, you can't park here because you got to be staff. <laughs> and we're like, well, we've got badges. Well, no, you're not staff. You oh. got to be an employee of the convention center. Yeah. So now you got to remember, if you go to Google Maps and you look up the platinum lot, it's right behind South Hall. Right. That platinum lot's got to be what? Five, six acres of. Oh, it's land. giant. It's huge. It's giant. It holds thousands of cars. And that's for the staff of the convention no. center. No, I have no idea, but they wouldn't let anybody in there. And every other parking lot in the whole place was taken up uh, with driving courses or burnout boxes or places to do donuts or places to stage uh, uh, equipment. Yeah. And you're so on your own when you're parking. Yeah. So, so long story short, the first day we, we, we kind of valeted the Jeep uh, because we were at the Westgate for the breakfast. So they just valeted the Jeep. And all fine and dandy. Day two, we get driving along and we're going down uh, Convention Center Boulevard or whatever it's called there by the by the West Hall. Right. And there's the Marriott with a sign out front that says, "Don't tell them our secrets, man." Um, that says, uh, "Don't park here unless you're John and Jason from the Get Out and Drive podcast." Yes, so that's we saw correct. that sign with our name on it, and we pulled into there, parked the Jeep in the parking garage, and literally. Bloop, 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 bloop. tiptoed across the street boom you're in the north hall or the west hall in the west hall right it was like 20 yards yep like right across the street coffee and a donut and away you go right so that's what we did the second day too we looked for that sign with our name on it that said we could park there yes and uh without giving away our secrets we uh <laughs> parked <laughs> but to me the left hand not knowing what the right hand is doing <clears throat> was the theme of the week. Everywhere we went, we were told we couldn't do what we wanted to and that we had to go here. And then when we got here, we were told we can't do that. We had to go there. That's exactly correct. And everything was completely different than last year. Everything. Heaven forbid, heaven forbid they don't change anything. No, and, and right. But I mean, I know they're under, they're, they're trying to change things around and SEMA is going to add more things for 2023. They're adding a concert beforehand. That is that, that anybody can go to. That's not just business oriented because Thursday, uh, excuse me, Tuesday through Thursday is still going to be, uh, person to person, business to business. You have to be in the industry to get in, but they're going to have a concert and they're going to have an, uh, an automotive, uh, auction, auto auction. I don't know where that is going to go at all. I have no idea. And they well, have F1 racing. It, it, it'll, it'll probably happen at that place where they allowed us to park. I guess. So that's probably where the auction is going to take place is in, in our parking spot. Well, I'm going to auction whatever vehicle I'm driving. I'm auctioning that. Yeah. That's where I'm parking. <laughs> well, <laughs> and for those who didn't know, uh, John and, and, and his wife were in St. Louis, and they, they drove to Las Vegas in an 89 Jeep Cherokee. Oh, yeah. And Junior and I flew. <clears throat> so, you know, we were pretty excited to see that our Lyft or our Uber pulled up to the airport, and it was John and Joanne in this 89 cheap Cherokee. And we thought we were being awfully unique by driving through Las Vegas in this classic old Jeep. But man, right. there was a pile of those XJs on the road up there. Yeah. There's a lot of them. Yes. Some good, some not so good. Some not so good. I think yours was, you know, cresting the, the cream of the crop there. <laughs> I hope so. You know, and, uh, 
it, uh, it, it was a, it was a great experience. Um, you know, getting to meet John and Joanne, uh, they were great hosts. Um, of course we shared a Airbnb and, um, you know, they were great hosts. They cooked for us. They bought groceries for us. They, you know, <laughs> they, they really looked after junior and I, we were, we we're very, uh, very happy about that. And we, you know, great to finally meet you guys in person and, uh, and had a great experience that way too. But, but, uh, back to the show, um, would I go again? Would I go to see him again, despite the frustration of trying to find a place to park, the frustration of not knowing where to go to get your proper credentials. Um, the amount of walking we did, my answer we is did absolutely. do some walking. We we did do some walking. We did some walking, and uh, you know, again, the Las Vegas Convention Center is made up of four halls. One of those halls has two stories, one point two million square feet. Yes, that's just inside. That's just under the roof. That's not talking about all the parking lots that are out there, full right. of experiences, hoonigans, and and the, and the West Hall is brand new. Brand new. The West Thank Hall you. is brand new. I had never, never been in that hall before. Yeah. Um, Crazy. So, yes, the answer is yes. I would absolutely go back again uh, next year and uh, with a few lessons learned. So, one might be staying a little closer to the venue that we don't have to drive and find parking, uh, but there's a right. cost associated with that. So, you know, we look at the Airbnb uh, for the four of us the cost was split. So it was a lot cheaper to stay there than maybe it would have been at Caesars or the Westgate or the whatever uh, that's just down the street. So there's a cost associated with convenience at Las Vegas. If you, uh, if you want to be right there within walking distance, you're going to pay for that. Uh, if you want to park at the front door, you're going to pay for that. Right. Uh, so uh, the experience that I had, just SEMA as a whole, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, as a first time goer, Las Vegas was great. Um, a little big for my likings. I'm from a small town, folks. I, I live in a town uh, where the greater population is like less than 5,000 people. And we go to Las Vegas, there's 130,000 people just there at SEMA. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't, you're include. scared of, you were scared of the airport. Was I? <laughs> oh my. It took you guys an hour just to find me. Yes, that is correct. I kept yelling out the window, where are the Canadians? <laughs> Nobody had seen you, so I just kept on going. So what was your what was your favorite thing that was at the show? I, I know I have some things that were special, but what what did you see that popped out? It, it's it it really is hard to narrow down, and I've been asked that a lot. Uh, you know, what was your favorite thing? I could probably nail it down to what was my favorite top dozen because there's just right. so much to see there. Um, the Ring Brothers had several entries uh, that I absolutely fell in love with. Uh, one I didn't think I was going to like, uh, but, you know, the more you looked at it, the more you loved it. Um, and we will have an interview on that. Not sure when that will go out, but uh, you'll have to tune into that one. The... 57 Chevy Lowrider in the North Hall at the Alpha Sonic booth. Again, why? I have no idea, but it struck my core, struck a chord with me. The electric display of all the electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, you guys all know how I feel about electric and EVs and all this stuff. And if you don't, I, I, I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm, I'm not only, I'm not even on the fence. I'm still looking at the fence, trying to decide which side I want to be on, <laughs> but I'm, I was impressed by the amount of aftermarket support for that type of hot rodding. And I would have to say that SEMA as a whole has really jumped on board with the whole EV side of hot rodding and aftermarket. Um, and why most people might ask is simply because they want to see the hot rodding. They want to see the aftermarket. They want to see our industry continue on for years and years and years. And if jumping on board that EV platform of hot rodding is the way to do it, that's what they got to do. Uh, so great display there. Um, at the racing junk booth, John, 
that 36 Pontiac that was sitting in the racing junk booth uh, where we got to spend a lot of time interviewing some really great folks. That was an amazing car. Um, Dodge had a great display. Um, again, you just, you, you can't, you can't narrow it down to any one or two vehicles. It's the experience itself was, was kind of what, what, uh, you know, makes me want to go back, but I know you had a number of vehicles there that, um, you just couldn't pull yourself away from. Right. And, uh, why don't you tell the folks who are listening, some of the cars that, that you fell in love with? Well, like you had done with the, the, uh, low rider cars that, that kind of sparked your interest. Uh, I did not know I was interested in overlanders, the overlander vehicles. We went and I stayed in the West hall and I was just standing there looking at these giant, giant trucks. I mean, they were Ford five fifty five fifties trucks with an even more giant camper on the back, two-story camper. How the hell you get a two-story camper? I mean, you're certainly not taking that through the Wendy's drive through And these things were already lifted like 10 inches. Right. They're giant. They're on 55-inch tires, you know, or bigger. They're giant, and, and, and it's so crazy how big they were. And I don't know where you drive these things or where you drive them over, but they're badass, and I want one. Um, the EV stuff was great. I really liked that. Uh, and as everybody knows, I'm super dorky. Uh, I really liked, uh, the, uh, uh, the Pinto cruising wagon that, that oh, had, yes. ex, that had the echo tech in it. Childhood memories right there. Yeah. And, uh, it, it just an absolutely out of the box thinking, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful build on that car. Um, and it was in the battle of the builders. Uh, it did not win, uh, ring brothers. And yo was, uh, one of the ones that, uh, we talked about quite a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on the fence, whether or not Chevy. I liked it yep. uh, for the 48 Chevy. I was on the yep. fence, whether I liked it. And the more I stood there and I looked at it, the more I did like that truck. Um, a lot of, a lot of crazy cars that were there. Um, a quad cab. 67 Chevy pickup. Oh, the yellow one. The yellow, the yellow quad cab that was, uh, and, and that was a, uh, uh, Hills hot rods build. Mm -hmm. Um, there were more bro dozer, you know, lights and whistles and giant train horns. There were bro dozer trucks everywhere to see on the outside of the, uh, outside of SEMA. Um, most of them with out front drive shafts. I might add most of them with Bluetooth front drive shafts. Yes. Yep. Uh, one, an incredible car. I couldn't believe I could stand in front of was gray Baskerville's 32 Ford Roadster. How many people walked right past that car? They passed it. Yeah. Because they had no idea what it was. They're like, what is this rat rod? They're missing paint and has primer on it. And, and it's all chipped up and terrible looking. And, and I'm standing there for 30 minutes staring at the thing. Um, <laughs> Falling in love. <laughs> oh my God. A beautiful car. Uh, Hills hot rods. Uh, had another uh, square body that was dark green and olive green that was sitting outside. Uh, that was incredible. Um, I remember seeing uh, there was a VW Bug that was painted like brown metallic uh, that had a beautiful street rod interior in it. Uh, all sorts of things. Um, but half the things I don't remember because my feet hurt so bad. <laughs> well, let, let's set the let's set the cars aside for a second and some of the great people yep. we got to meet while we were there sitting in the racing junk booth. Sometimes we were in sitting in their booth, right. uh, getting to interview them. Um, some of the celebrities that were walking around there. Uh, I got to chat with Bodie and yeah. his son. Yeah. That, that and was, uh, that was fantastic. I got to um, meet Barry McGuire. Oh yeah. That was fantastic. Wax. Yep. Uh, you know, and we got to interview a fellow from McGuire's as well. Mm -hmm. And like, if you're somebody and you're in the car industry mm -hmm. to some degree, chances are you were at SEMA at least one of the three days that you were, that, that it was, that it was happening. Um, 
I met some uh, folks who introduced themselves to me that follow me yep. as old car guy from my YouTube channel and my Instagram, which I thought was absolutely insane. Here I am 3000 miles away from home and somebody recognizes me out of a crowd. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty uh, easy to point out, I guess, with the beard, and the, <laughs> but like seeing other YouTubers, I met uh, Craig from the Craig 909, mm -hmm. uh, Dan and Danny from DD speed shop bumped into them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there were several others that we just, you know, you walk by it's, Hey, we recognize each other. You go over, you chat for a few minutes. Um, and I, I can't wait to start, uh, you know, talking and, and promoting some of these interviews, uh, mm -hmm. that we've done they, we just, we had a blast and, um, I can't wait for 2023. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, 2023 is going to involve, some sort of a rechargeable electric sneaker or scooter or I need some or something. I need Heelys. Heelys. EV Heelys. EV Heelys. Anybody out there listening and they can invent some EV Heelys. Write that down, Jason. EV Heelys. Million dollar idea. We're headed to Shark Tank. And <clears throat> yeah. So one thing we didn't say mm. was just how super duper. The super folks fantastic over at racing junk booth are everybody at racing junk is super fantastic super duper that is true you didn't <laughs> tell them you didn't tell anybody i got accosted by uh emma from mob steel no it was uh it was actually uh, pretty neat to to meet her uh you know i i've been following her on instagram for quite a while and um you know some of the other folks that we got to meet yeah. Uh, you know, while we were uh, wandering around, it's hung just out with Tim, hung out with Tim strange for a Tim while. Tim strange. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We met uh, with uh, Tim strange, uh, Al Liebman. Yep. Um, who was the guy? Uh, he reached out to me. I have his card on my desk in there. Mm -hmm. um, Barry alt. Uh, oh yeah. You know, some of these guys who are doing the same thing that we are, we're, we're, right. we're, we're in there. We're reporting, uh, investigating. We're, we're talking, we're learning. Mm -hmm. uh, we're being entertained, uh, you know, and, and that's really what SEMA was for me is it was, mm -hmm. uh, it was a trade show, uh, mm -hmm. with lots of famous vehicles, people, products, uh, that just happened to have a bunch of really cool cars inside. Oh yeah. You got to tell everybody, everybody thinks SEMA is a car show. It's not, it is 100% has to do with businesses and promoting the automotive industry of all types and sure it has cars sure it has trophies sure it has fun it's a notch in your belt to get to go uh or it's a notch in your belt if you bring a vehicle and you actually win something there and that's, that's right. how they get vehicles to go and they get new products and they get people pushing the envelope of how to build um but it is first and foremost if you are thinking about going to SEMA and you're listening to this podcast it is not a car show but if you're part of the automotive industry, we'd love to have you. Uh, it's a great show and it's a great place to meet people and see and be seen. And if you were at SEMA 2022, we want to hear your story about what your favorite part of SEMA 2022 is. So if you go to our website at getoutanddrive.com, go to our Lister hotline, throw us a line, tell us what you thought was your favorite part of SEMA, and maybe we'll send you a gift. So make sure you hit us up over at getoutanddrive.com.